Music in ancient Greece had an important role in all human activities. Music accompanied religious and other ceremonies, ancient drama, and also the important personal events in the lives of the citizens, such as marriage, death, everyday activities, agricultural work, and symposiums. Even in athletic games, music competitions used to take place. A plethora of musical instruments, string, wind, and percussion, are found in ancient literature, as well as on vase paintings and elsewhere. For ancient Greeks, musical instruments were not merely sound-producing devices. Their sound leads humans to the philosophy of esotericism, to exaltation, and to overcoming the anxiety they feel in a world often hostile thus affirming the harmony of the order of things in the universe. The lyre was the best known and most widely used instrument in antiquity and was closely linked with the worship of Apollo. The development of the lyre passed through various evolutionary stages relating to the materials, the method of tuning, and the number of strings. In its initial form, it was made of a tortoiseshell, animal horns, a wooden cylindrical rod, strings made of animal gut or sinews, or even from plant fibers such as flax. The front side of the tortoiseshell was covered by a leather membrane on which the bridge was seated. The strings were tied on a wooden string holder at the lower end of the tortoise shell. The strings passed through the cylindrical rod and were tied on leather straps. These straps were tied in such a way so as to form several knots. By holding the straps from these knots, the player could turn the straps in order to tune the strings. In later stages of the development of the lyre, sea tortoise shells or wooden shell replicas were used. The animal horns were also substituted by wooden replicas. The performer held the instrument close to his body with his right arm, aided by a leather strap, which was attached to the right side of the instrument while his right hand remained free to play. He could also play with his right hand using a plectrum, which was tied on the lyre's arm. The sound produced by the plectrum was louder and of a different timbre. The number of the strings varied in antiquity, but for a long period of time, it was seven. For Pythagoras, the number seven was sacred and represented the seven planets close to Earth. It also represented the seven notes of the natural scale, from which the harmony of all sound derives, as well as the harmony of the spheres. According to mythological and philosophical accounts, magical properties were attributed to the sound of the instrument, as well as to the influence it had on humans. Plato considered the lyre the most appropriate instrument for the education of the youth. 
the performer could play the lyre only with open strings. He could not press the strings to alter their length, as lyres had no neck like many of the contemporary string instruments do. Nevertheless, the player can achieve various scales by tuning the instrument before any performance within the range of the seven strings. Lyre accompaniment in ancient times was plain and was intended to just accompany the singer's voice or the melodic line of a solo instrument, such as the oros, without necessarily following all notes of the melodic line. Nevertheless, the lyre player could play more than one note simultaneously, in combination with parts of the melodic line. If one attempts to innovate by playing a contemporary piece using the lyre, they could play in the same fashion as in antiquity. That is, by partially following the melodic line in accompanying the singer's voice. Nevertheless, double notes or even chords can be used in addition to the melodic line. Let her into your heart, then you can start.